guys and welcome to Friday's episode of the School of Hot Knocks. So, like always, we'll be jumping on to the Pokemon Global Link Basketball Ladder, playing under the Championship Battle Rules, which are the equivalent rule set of the VGC 2017 season. We start off the week this week with that Togo Tomorrow team. Again, we made some changes from last week's variation of it. We introduced the Bravery and the Arcanine into the team this week, and we've had some alright games, um, and hopefully we can kind of continue that. Now, I do have a little question that I want you guys to let me know with what you want to do for next week. I have built, um, we were discussing last week on the channel um, about the band call, which is the Tapu Bulu Arcanine Nihiligo call that we're seeing gain quite a lot of popularity. Now I have built a band call, so do you want me to continue playing this team, making tweaks and things like that, or do you want me to play that? Let me know in the comment section below, and that will decide what we do on Monday, depending on what you guys want to see. So we have a first opponent of the day, and they're running a team of Slowking, not a Slowpoke today, we've already seen one of them this week. Um, a lot of Marowak, Tapu Koko, Tapu Bulu, Gastrodon, and Arcanine, so, hmm. My opponent has their own lightning and lightning rod user, but we don't have really any electric on our team apart from the Togo tomorrow. Um, and I don't know if I really want to bring it here anyway. Um, it's going to struggle against the. It's not going to hit the Tapu Bulu for good damage. It's going to struggle against the Gastron and Arcanine, and especially that Marowak as well. So, um, what are we going to do here? I think Snorlax might be all right. We have to be a bit careful of the. Um, the potential toxic from things like Arcanine and Gastrodon, but other than that, Snorlax could perform quite well here. Um, do we want Bravery as well? Bravery is nice against the Arcanine. We're gonna have to really make our minds up with what we're doing though. Um, okay, okay, okay. Let's bring Tapu Finny, Snorlax, Arcanine, and Garchomp. So let's go with those four and jump in. Um, also guys, thank you so much as always for kind of um, commenting and letting me know with your feedback on the um, the VGC analyzer at, that we're doing at the end of these episodes. Obviously, if all games go to plan and everything's fine, then we won't tag on an analyzer. It's just for those games that we have a bit of you know some problems with in areas where we've not played so well, and it's good to just go back and look and see exactly where we went wrong. And hopefully, we'll continue that. And as we're going through, and um, things will keep on improving with that as well. So we do see my opponent lead with the Slow King and the Gastrodon. Uh, we do get the Misty Terrain up. Um, hmm. Now, whew. the thing is, like I said before, was that we have to be wary of the Toxic. Now, my opponent could just switch in a Tapu here, change the terrain and go for a Toxic with the Gastrodon to the Snorlax. Um, but they may not as well. I don't want to use any water type attacks here because we're not going to be doing too much to these water type attackers. I think I'm just going to launch out a Moonblast into the Gastrodon and I'm going to go for a Curse with Snorlax and start boosting up while I can. So there's the Moonblast. This should do a decent amount of damage. We are Specs. Oh, doing about half that, half health and lowering a special attack, which is super nice. Really going to help us out here, take that Sludge Bomb. And, oh, a Surf. Okay, so boosting that Gastrodon's uh, special attack, kind of resetting the special attack drop that we got with the Moonblast, but we know that the Moonblast can put it in, in range next turn, so we don't need to worry too much about that. We do get the curse off. Hmm. And I think what I'm going to do here is just go for another Moonblast into that slot, and I'm going to go, rather than keep cursing up. I'm going to double into that slot because you could imagine something like the Marowak maybe coming in here. So I'm just going to hire horsepower into that slot to kind of cover any switch-ins here. So the slot king withdraws and the Tapu Bulu comes in. Okay. But as long as the Gastrodon stays in, we are going to pick up the KO here. But the Gastrodon protects. Okay. So, nice play from my opponent there. Hmm. And we do recover a little bit of damage with our damage Pokemon through this grassy terrain. Ah, 
But we don't know the speed here of that Tapu Bulu, so that's a bit awkward, isn't it? Um, I think what I'm going to do is bring in the Arcanine here, switch out the Finny, and go for a... I'm going to go for another Curse with Snorlax now. Because we've got to expect, uh, the thing is, like, you would expect a, a wood hammer maybe into the, the Tapu Fini slot. Um, the Gastro might may just go for a poison, a sludge bomb into that slot as well. Which Arcanine is going to be able to take pretty nicely. And just getting the Intimidate onto the Tapu Bulu in this situation is going to come in super handy. So, um, more so against the, the Tapu Bulu than the, the Gastrodon. But... If we can get another curse up and then we can start kind of rocking out, yeah, I was a little bit afraid of the substitute coming out from the Tapu Bulu, but, and there's a recover from the Gastrodon, just undoing all that work that we've done in those previous turns. But we are going to get another curse up with our Snorlax, which is going to help us out massively, so. Right. Hmm. You've got to think that Tapu Bulu would maybe protect you, and the Gastrodon attack into the Arcanine. Huh. I don't really have anything that I want to... I'm going to protect Arcanine here, and I'm going to go for a... I'm going to go for a Facade into the Tapu Bulu, just to kind of just cover that slot. It may protect, but if it doesn't, then at least we're kind of getting rid of the Substitute, which is going to be nice for going into that next turn. Yeah, so no Protect from the Tapu Bulu. does just go for a Wood Hammer, but because of those Curses in the Intimidate, we're taking that quite nicely. It does take a little bit of recoil. We will get the Facade off, and we are going to see... Ooh, a Hydro Vortex. Is this into the Arcanine slot? You've got to expect it maybe is, but they might be targeting down the Snorlax just to try and get some damage onto it and get rid of it because it is quite threatening at the moment. So, yeah, into the Snorlax, but we should be able to take this quite comfortably. This should just proc our berry and bring us near enough back up to full health, which is nice. And we will get rid of that pesky substitute in front of the Tapu Bulu. <sighs> right, so I think we can pretty much bank on the Tapu Bulu protecting here. Um, hmm. Yeah, and the Slow King probably coming back in. So what I'll do is just switch out my Arcanine into my Tapu Fini, and I'm just going to go for a Recycle with Snorlax, get that berry back. And my opponent just forfeits. Very strange. Especially at that score, you know. Um, but maybe just not feeling confident with having the Snorlax, you know, boosted up and then thinking maybe I've got no options to take this down at this point of the game. I, the thing is, you could have switched in the Slorking to that um, Arcanine slot, um, you know, for the potential Flare Blitz. Um, and then carried on trying to boost up the, uh, the Gastrodon. Um, but... Hmm. It's difficult, isn't it? I think we got ourselves into a nice position with the curses there. Um, and Snorlax just being so bulky, able to take just a, a peripheral of, of moves as well. The Intimidate obviously helped as well, but um, definitely a bit surprised at that, that drop there. But it is a win, I guess. So we'll just move on to our next game. Maybe we'll get three games in today. So we're going to play Andy from Italy, and he is running a team of he or she. Is running a team of Tapu Koko, Arcanine, Tapu Fini, Cartana, Porygon 2, and Mudsdale. So we've got the, the P2 and the horse here, which are going to be the, the trick room, main trick room mode of the team you would expect. Um, supported possibly with, you know, you've got that AFK core as well with the Tapu Fini, Cartana, Arcanine. It's going to be hard to break down, but we need to try and break the wheel with that. Once we take a component out of it, like Arcanine, um, it's a lot easier to deal with. Um, and then you've got Tapu Koko, uh, just tagged on the end there. It's almost like a fake PG sort of team um, with the Mudsdale kind of just replacing the Gigalith there. So, huh, what do we want to do? Like, Bravery is quite nice and Togodomaru as a lead, to be honest. 
Um, hmm. But we would need to be a bit careful about. Huh. Hey, Tapu Fini, Togdemaru is not bad. But then we've got to worry about the trick room. So I do want to bring stuff for the trick room. Do I want to bring bravery? I don't know if I do. I might just want to bring Arcanine and Snorlax here, I think, in the back. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's go with those four. <sighs> like bravery would be nice, especially with the Scarf and because of the Arcanine and how it's likely to be used to cycle things, but I might put my opponent off. Um, at least leading it. Yeah, we see that, that Trick Room lead come out with the Porygon 2 and the Mudsdale here. We lead off with our Togodomaru and our Tapu Fini. So, I think what I'll do here is just allow my opponent to go for the Trick Room if they want. And I'm just going to switch in Snorlax. Hmm. Or I could switch in Arcanine. But it's likely that you could see a high horsepower onto that slot. Hmm. Thing is, I could like one option I could do is fake out the mudsdale, just go for muddy water, um, at least that would stop the mudsdale attacking this turn. And you know, the next turn, then we can bring in Snorlax. So I might just do that. Yeah, we'll we'll go for that fake out play and just the muddy water. We may see the mudsdale just protect here. The mudsdale actually withdraws. I'm going to see Tapu Fini come in on that slot. Okay. So there's the fake out, and um, we do get the muddy water off. We should be doing like decent damage because we are choice specs. So yeah, it's doing not bad damage anyway, and an accuracy drop as well, which is pretty huge onto that Porygon too. And Togedemaru avoids. That's really nice. Um, hmm. Now we could go for the um, the Zing Zap into the Tapu Fini, but it's likely that the the Mudsdale might switch in here. Um, I think what I'll do is just go for an Encore onto the Porygon 2, lock it into Ice Beam and just go for another Muddy Water because I can see the Mudsdale possibly coming in on that Tapu Fini slot and the Porygon 2 going for a Trick Room. But may not as well because, you know, you don't want to switch in the Mudsdale on a Muddy Water either. So, so we see a Muddy Water come out from the opposing Tapu Fini. Does a decent chunk of damage onto the, and we get an accuracy drop onto our Tapu Fini, and that comes in and pays dividends because it does make us avoid the muddy water on the opposing Tapu Fini, which isn't ideal. And there's the ice beam, and oof, that Porygon two is not hitting anything. I think this turn I will go for the um, the Gigavolt Havoc into the Tapu Fini, um, and I'm just going to throw out another muddy water at this point. No switches. So we should be picking up the KO here with our Togodomaru, hopefully. We have done a little bit of chip onto this Tapu Fini. Of course, it does come down to depend on how it has been trained, but we haven't been intimidated, so we should, should be picking up the KO here. Yeah, okay, that's great. Okay, so we do take down the Fini, and we get a Muddy Water off does hit excellent and single target should be doing a bit more damage yeah doing really nice damage it's kind of nearly in range and that Porygon 2 finally hits an ice beam which is nice for my opponent and let's see what my opponent will bring in next so it is the Cortana okay so what are we gonna do hmm. I think what I'll do is Huh. Hmm. See, we should survive. Huh. The thing is, I, I'm a bit cautious of a Bloom Doom coming out from the uh, the Cartana right now. And like, one option I could do is switch out the Togedemaru into the Arcanine. We're going to get the Intimidate onto the Cartana. That should allow us to take um, a Leaf Blade and get Muddy Water off, which should pick up the KO onto the P2 and do a decent chunk to the Cartana breaking any potential Sash. But like I say, because of the, the threat of the Bloom Doom, 
you know, even through Intimidate, that would pick up the Chaos. So I don't really fancy risking that just at this point in the game. So I'm just going to play a bit cautious, switch my Tapu Fini out for the Arcanine, um, get the Intimidate off, and just spike your shield with my Togodomaru. Um, at least this next turn, then we're putting a lot of pressure on that Cartana with our Arcanine as well. So we do see the Porygon 2 switch out, and the Mudsdale come onto the field. We do get a spiky shield off. And what we're going to see this Cartana do. Does go for a Leaf Blade. And there's always a chance of it landing a critical hit as well, which isn't ideal. So, right now, hmm. Don't think we have. Huh. Okay. Um. Kind of want to. I've got to really switch out Togodomaru. I'll switch it into Tapu Fini. And. You've got to expect the Cartana to protect here, possibly. And the Mudsdale go for that high horsepower into the Arcanine. So I'm just going to protect Arcanine this turn. Got to hope that the Cartana doesn't go for a Sacred Sword into that. I am um, a Leaf Blade into that Togodomaru slot, though. No protect from the Cartana. And there's a Sacred Sword, so into that Togodomaru slot. But Tapu Fini going to be able to take that quite nicely, and there's that high horsepower. Huh. Mr. Train does disappear from the field. Now, I will switch in Snorlax. Ha! I'm in a bit of a really tight situation here where I can't really... Like, I can attack the Cartana, but the Cartana is going to probably pick up the KR onto my Finny. Could we take a Leaf Blade from that range? I don't think we could, you know. It's probably better if I get try and get Snorlax in here. And then just try and get a Flare Blitz off into the Cartana. I'm going to try it. I'm going to have to go for it. Hopefully we don't see the Cartana switch here, because that would be terrible for us. No, no switches, so go for that Leaf Blade. Snorlax taking that quite comfortably after the Intimidate. We are going to get the Flare Blitz. But you've got to think that it's probably sashed. Yeah. And we're probably going to take a high horsepower. Which will pick up the KO, unfortunately, on our Arcanine. Oh, okay. So, doubling into the Tapu Fini slot. I don't mind that at all. That's way better. Um, hmm. Right, I'm just going to recycle here, and I'm going to go for a Protect. Kind of calling the Protect on the Cartana. It hasn't protected yet, but it's got to protect at some point. Okay, so, don't see the Protect on the Cartana. We see the, the Porygon 2 come in, so... Potentially, we will see a higher horsepower into the Arcanine slot this, this time, so... Oh, no, it's just a close combat. Okay. Snorlax just about taking that... It's a good job that we, we did go for that recycle here. Um, but kind of my opponent playing really well around this, kind of knowing that I'm on a lot of pressure with that Mudsdale on the field. Um, putting so much pressure on with that high horsepower onto my Arcanine. I need the Arcanine to deal with the Cartana. So, um, hmm. I don't know if my opponent wants to go for. I'm just going to go for another. Uh, no, I'm not. Hmm. Hmm. Will another pass combat probably take us down? It probably will. I think what I could do is switch in Finny. And then. Ha. Huh. No, I can't really do that. I think I've got to recycle with Snorlax and then switch Finny in for my Arcanine. And hope I can take another close combat. I don't know if we're going to be able to though, especially if the Porygon 2 doubles into us. So there's the recover from the, the Porygon 2, taking this opportunity to get that recover off. And there's another close combat. Yeah, it does take us down unfortunately. But because of those defense drops, that's pretty nice. Because um, a Muddy Water now should be able to pick up the KO. I'm going to bring in Togodomaru. 
and we can try and get a fake out onto that P2. And I am just going to go for a muddy water because I think even, well, the Carton is down to its sash, so even if it switches in at this point, it's going to go down if the muddy water hits, so we will just go for that play. And at least we've got the Arcanine in the back as well to bring in on the Cartana. There's the fake out. No protect coming out from my opponent, so we need to hit this muddy water. We do. This should take down the mud sail. It's had two special defense drops with choice specs, so yeah. Which is great. Okay. You've got to expect the Cartana here to attack into the Tapu Fini slot. Um, hmm. I'm going to spike your shield with Togo tomorrow, and uh, I don't know if I want to actually. I'm just going to double into the Cartana. I think it's a lot safer if I just do that with the Zing Zap and a Muddy Water. Cartana actually detects this turn, so not ideal. So we'll see what this Porygon 2 goes for. Do get the Muddy Water, does it hit? It does hit the Porygon 2. And there's the return. Oof. Oh, we're getting seriously lucky here. Um, hmm. I'm gonna go for a spiky shield. Oh, my opponent has to go for it, I think. Has to go for the, the, the Tapu Fini here, really, doesn't it? You'd think so. Hmm. But we should still have enough with Arcanine to take down the P2, I think, hopefully. So, it's going for the Togodomaru, that's fine, I prefer it to go for that, we just need to make sure the Muddy Water hits here. We need to make sure of it, like we have any control over it. Cartana getting that Beast Boost, get the Muddy Water, and do hit, so we take down that Cartana, which is the biggest threat to us right now, and oof, that Porygon 2 just hanging on with a sliver of HP. Goes for the Recover though, so we get away from any damage this turn. And we should be able to close out the game now with Arcanine coming in. And Tapu Fini, just a combination of Flare Blitz and that Muddy Water should be enough to kind of take the game for us. It feels like it's been a really long game. So, there we go, we're gonna lock in. There's a Flare Blitz. We're just banking on that Muddy Water hitting. Who does it hit? It does. Excellent. So, very good game for my opponent. Um, got very awkward at points there, just with not having too much um, for the Cartana switch in, um, threatening like a lot of my team with different attacks. Um, I think we got through it all right with some of the switch in that we made. Um, so, didn't turn out too bad in the end. And should we have one more game? Hmm. Let's have one more game. Let's have one more game. This is where we have one more game and then it goes wrong. So, and then I feel like I need to do an analyzer and then the video becomes way too long. I do tend to try and keep the videos down to around like under 30 minutes is like my preference if I can. Um, you know, I really like to keep them around 20 to 25 minutes, but sometimes it's a bit difficult and you do lose track of time as well when you, you're kind of just playing away. So we'll see. That first game, it kind of cut off pretty quickly. So um, hopefully we're not going over too much, guys. Um, so we've got our next opponent. Uh, they run a team of Porygon 2, Araquanid, Cartana, Tapacoco, Arcanine and Nailigor. So, hmm. P2, Araquanid. Trick Room mod there, um, which is pretty threatening. So 
you know. Um, Snorlax is going to be nice here, but then again, we still have to be very careful of the um, Hydro Vortex that could come out from the Araquanid. The Cortana threatens the Snorlax pretty hard. Um, hmm. Kind of really want to just base the whole game plan around Snorlax this game, though. Um, it kind of puts off my opponent going for the Trick Room a lot. Huh. So we could, like, what I'm thinking right now is going um, Bravery, Snorlax, Togedemaru, and probably Arcanine. Which isn't too bad, I don't think. Yeah, I think I might just do that. So, Bravery, Snorlax, Togedemaru, and Arcanine. Let's give that a go. Let's give that a whirl. Let's see how we get on. I have no idea what music I've got locked in either, but whatever, it doesn't matter. <sighs> I'm so pleased it's Friday, I can't wait for the weekend, and we're going to have that live stream tomorrow, guys. So, um, kind of consensus, um, like early afternoon seems to be um, a better time for you guys, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll aim to do it around um, 2 o'clock, but we'll talk about that after this match. Um, so we've got my opponent leading off with the Arcanine and that Nihilingo. Um, getting the Intimidate off. So, huh, what we could do, depending on how this Nihilingo is built, we could go for um, a superpower into it. Huh. Which may pick up the KO. But then we do risk getting... Um, Like, we could kill the Arcanine straight up. That's pretty nice. Um, and just high horsepower into the Nihiligo, which is going to do a good chunk of damage. Or we could double into the Nihiligo, um, or just superpower it. I think what I'm going to do is just double into it with a high horsepower and a superpower, just in case it's sashed. So there's an extreme speed from the Arcanine. There's a superpower to the Nihiligo. Is that sashed? No. Wow, it actually survives. We are going to lose the bravery, unfortunately. So we need this high horsepower to hit, really. Hmm. Nihiligo does get the beast boost. Oh, wow, it's life orbed. Okay, so that works out even better because we'll get the high horsepower into this Arcanine and get some nice damage onto it early on. That's ideal, okay. Um, ba -ba -bum. You've got to expect the Cartana to come in here, so I'm going to bring in my own Arcanine. Ah, oh, but it is a Tapu Koko. Okay, I don't mind this at all, because we can go for a curse, switch in Togedemaru, and avoid any big electric type attacks coming out. The only thing is my opponent could predict the Togedemaru coming in on that Arcanine slot, which wouldn't be ideal, but... I don't know how likely it is. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to switch in Toga tomorrow. And I'm going to go for a curse with Snorlax while I have the chance to do it. Let's hope they go for like a Gigavolt Havoc here. That would be amazing. But uh, I think my opponent is trying to bait me in. So we're probably going to see a Flare Blitz into that Arcanine slot. Which isn't ideal. We do see the Tapu Koko switch out for the Porygon too. And I think we're going to take a Flare Blitz here. Huh. Oh, a Toxic into the Snorlax. Alright. I don't mind that too much because we do have the Facade. So, But we're on a counter now. That's the thing. We are on a counter. So we need to play pretty smart. Pretty quick. Um, we do have... A Z move though, still intact. Um, hmm. I think what I'll do is huh, I really want to try and get another curse off, but we're probably going to see the Arcanine maybe switch out. I'm going to go for an, an encore into the Arcanine just in case it does stay in. And huh, it's probably not going to though, is it? I'm going to go for a facade into that slot as well. 
just in case the corporal comes in and we can catch it. Ah, protect. Okay. So what we're going to see this Porygon 2 do? Just go for an Ice Beam. Breaking a potential Sash on the Togodomaru. And the poison starting to tick down. Hmm. Okay. Um, hmm. Could we do? We could lock. The, oh, sorry, I'm not even explaining this. We could lock the Arcanine into Protect, but it's so obvious that we would do that. So you're looking at the type of Coco coming in here, maybe, possibly. Um, and I'm just thinking whether I want to Encore that slot or not, or if I want to switch my Arcanine in. And I think I probably want to switch the Arcanine in here and just go for the Facade into that slot. It should be enough to pick up the KO onto the Arcanine with, with the boost, maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. We kind of just reset the curse, the intimidate boost, so possibly not. But you'd think it might switch. No, just going for extreme speed to kind of try and lock it itself out of that. Um, on call. We just take a nice beam, and if, oh, and we get frozen, which isn't good. But we do have flare blitz, so it's not the end of the world. We are going to get that facade into the Arcanine. We do pick up the kill. Excellent. Okay. So, all is not lost just yet. But like I say, we are on a bit of a counter here. Right, so... Here, I think, what I'm going to do is go for... Uh, I'm going to switch in Togodomaru back into that slot, and I'm going to go for... Another facade into the Tapu Koko. And I might have to switch out the Snorlax to reset the toxic damage once the berry procs. Just so we reset the, the toxic counter. We are going to see a Z move from the Tapu Koko. It's going to be that Gigavolt Havoc, but we have switched in that Togodomaru, so it is just going to be absorbed by the little mouse. And we should get the facade off. Which I don't know whether boost it is going to be enough to take down the Tapu Koko. Whether or not it is, it's going to do a good chunk of damage to it regardless. And we see a double. So that Togodomaru really putting in some work this turn. And we get the facade off. Like I say, it's not going to pick up the KO there, but... So it's just procking that berry. Okay, so what I'm going to do... Like I said previously, I'm going to just go for a... I'm going to on-call the Porygon 2 and I'm going to switch in Arcanine for Snorlax just to reset that toxic damage we'll probably see the Tapu Koko maybe protect here or maybe not, just go for a Dazzling Gleam I guess, it's probably its only option that it's got at the moment but if we can lock that Porygon 2 into Thunderbolt that's going to make our lives a lot easier going forward for the rest of these turns yeah there's the protect from the Tapu Koko which is fine and there's the Encore. And we can stop that Porygon 2 from recovering now. Kind of wish we had a special attack attack to, to uh, take advantage of all these boosts. Um, we'll just go for a Zing Zap into the Porygon 2. And I'll go for a Flare Blitz into the Tapu Koko. Which should be enough to pick it out. And we'll, we'll defrost ourselves with the Flare Blitz. And my opponent just forfeits, so that's super nice. Uh, very good game to my opponent. And a nice set of games today, I think, guys. We obviously had that first one, which was very quick. Had that second slog one. But I think we've done all right in the games today. I don't think we warrant um, a VGC episode anal analyzer today. I don't think we need to go through what we've played. Um, but what I would like you to do, guys, is just let me know your opinions on the matches today. Let me know if you feel like an analyzer would be needed, if it would be good to do an anal analyzer on things like this. Because as I've said previously um, with the episodes this week when we've been doing that VGC episode analyzer, 
Um, we're, we're kind of at the baby steps at the minute and we're just growing that little segment um, into something that's going to be extremely useful hopefully once I get it nailed and you know it's, it's exactly how I want it to be and it's really streamlined and stuff like that so um, if you feel like an analyzer little tag on at the end of this episode would be good let me know and let me know what aspects of the games today you would have liked to have seen a bit more in-depth explanation on and stuff like that because it is massively important um, and I would love to hear your opinions on that um, because I, ju I just want to make it a really good kind of um, piece to the, the School of Hard Knocks and um, I can't do it without your guys help like I need I need you guys to help me do this because um, it's gonna be something that you guys are gonna be um, benefiting from hopefully more than anything else so do um, do let me know if you've got time um, and I would love to hear uh, from you all about it if that's all right um, but the games today were pretty good I think a big improvement from what we've had through the week and um, so um, we'll end there now like I said at the start of the episode guys I've got a decision to make we can continue playing this team I'm having a lot of fun with it so if you want to see us play this team for another week that's great we can do that um, and we'll do that next week because we haven't really played it too much. We've played it last two weeks, but we've made changes in between. And I think this, what we've got at the minute, is going to be quite nice to go forward with and see how far we can take it and see if there's any other holes that we can kind of pull out um, from it. Um, so it's either this team or the band, the Tapu Bulu Nihiliga Arcanine team that I've, I've built. So it's entirely up to you. I will just take as many of the votes and suggestions from you guys as possible and then we'll make a decision on who wants to see which one more and then we'll make that decision for Monday so do let me know guys and um, we're gonna have a battle spot doubles team building streams this weekend Saturday and Sunday and um, I am gonna do the stream at 2 p.m. 2 o'clock UK time tomorrow on the channel so do tune in for that guys I hope that's a good time it kind of um, I can't do too late in the afternoon, that's the only thing, I've got stuff going on tomorrow evening, um, but I can do morning to, to mid-afternoon-ish time, so 2 o'clock would be perfect, we'll just do it for an hour, we'll sit down, bounce some ideas around, get those initial kind of um, structures made for the team, and then we'll finish it off on Sunday with all the jazzy EVs, movesets and other ideas and stuff like that, so um, do tune in if you can, it's going to be a lot of fun. And um, that'll kind of kickstart us into our Battle Spot Double Series next week. And I think, hopefully, it's something that will be really good to kind of do together. Um, so, we'll wrap things up there, guys. As always, if you've enjoyed this episode, please leave a like on the video. It's massively appreciated. If you're new to the channel, hello. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, subscribe to the channel so you get all the daily updates for when the, the videos come out from our School of Hard Knocks, Battle Spot Doubles, QR Code, and NBL Season 2. NBL Season 2, as well, this week is taking a little break. And we'll be back next week with our match. Um, we're playing Team Flawless, so Angus and Beryl um, with that Magiana. So the team builder will be on my channel next week and the match will be on my mate Hebeki's on the Saturday. So do stay tuned for that, but just no NBL this week. Um, but can't wait to get back into it. I think we've only got three games to play and we need to at least win two of them. So it's going to be a lot of pressure on. Um, but um, we'll end things off there guys i'll say enjoy your weekends if i don't see you on the stream um and whatever you do and have an amazing time take care of yourselves like always and i will speak with you on monday if i don't see you all beforehand but for those of you that are going to be around for the stream tomorrow i look forward to seeing you then it will be two o'clock uk time and um, tomorrow afternoon so do come if you can and get involved it's going to be a lot of fun so until then guys take care of yourselves and bye bye